Hello and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda with me, Arnold Sego, on a rather interesting edition where the Africa Institute of Mathematical Sciences has moved its headquarters from South Africa to Kigali, Rwanda. Very many implications in this space, especially after numerous reports do point to the fact that Africa is lacking when it comes to research, accounting for less than 1% of the global research, yet the population of the continent is north of a billion people. This is doing business in Rwanda. Africa is home to three of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world. Despite the stellar growth, however, entrepreneurship on the continent is still facing various challenges such as lack of accessible credit underdeveloped markets and most of all lack of emphasis on businesses and entrepreneurial training we've been having conversations about what in fact constitutes learning one of the things that um, concerns me is when I encounter young Africans who have bachelor's degrees and have master's degrees and they cannot find jobs, and yet when you begin to talk about the concept of entrepreneurship, they begin to present a whole lot of barriers why they cannot be entrepreneurs. We have no access to funding, we have no access to business development, we have no access you know, to, uh, to in information or to markets, but then the whole concept is, but what were you doing in school? Because by its very nature, learning must be something that permeates any walls. It should not be that we go into a system them to be able to learn, but then when we come out into the real world and the reality is not what we thought it was, it's going to be, our brains cannot switch and adapt to the reality of the external world. What I want is I want a time in which we move beyond open learning, right? We, we move beyond MOOCs, you know, these Coursera uh, programs in which you go online to read, to, 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 to be able to learn a subject. I want our young people to be able to come out of university, become entrepreneurs, still learn as they keep going. There can be you no know, more effective or better investment in Africa's future than in educating and empowering talented young people. We have to move beyond potential and create a workforce that will lead this real transformation for Africa. It will only be done through innovative scientific training, technical advances and breakthrough discoveries, and that is not going to be a shortcut. African nations face issues of a limited pool of qualified individuals due to relatively smaller private sectors and lack of professionalism this has facilitated a continued brain drain on the continent going as far as medical doctors, engineers and other talented personnel. However, Rwanda tops the World Economic Forum's list for holding on to her best and brightest and at the same time attracts international talent. Africa has, has, has a, a tremendous pool of talent. The only problem is that they are spread. They are spread around the world. They are not connecting to, to, together. And what, again, what we are doing within the NEF, uh, NEF uh, team is to build a community of scientists. So basically we try to, 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 to leverage on all those talents that are spread out around the world to create a community of scientists and which are connected together, which can showcase their results, which are, uh, let's say, exposed to the continent, and on which we can really uh, count on in order to um, increase the level of uh, science, science within the continent. As Africa moves towards the Agenda 2063, much emphasis has been put on infrastructure, professional and technical competence, entrepreneurial capacity, and implementing specific policies and programs in science, technology, and innovation. These will be key to further develop the continent and create solutions for the challenges at hand. I think you have to look at uh, the role of science in furthering Africa in a more global perspective. So basically, uh, the, on one hand side, you have uh, all the, the, the work around science, but on the other hand side, you have to look at all the framework that you create in order to 
to, to, to take advantage of what science is bringing to the continent. And what is probably um, then helpful is uh, you need to, to align uh, the challenges of the continent with what you need to address with, uh, with science. You know, I'm a health scientist and without ICT, without digitalization, none of my work will be able to move forward. So I think Rwanda is definitely going to move forward because data-driven economies are the ones that are going to make a difference. They're the ones that are going to address the challenges that we have for the future because if you don't use the data we have now properly, we're not going to be able to tell what's going to, we're not going to be able to model what is coming um, in the future. So we therefore need um, we therefore need to ensure that um, digitalization is what is driving any policy making that we make. So I think Rwanda has it. They're going to use the data to make decisions and they're going to lead because if you make smart decisions, you are going to be the leader in this, um, in, in this continent. For Africa to participate meaningfully in the global economy, we must build strong indigenous scientific and technological capacity. This is why we are pleased that AIMS is taking on this role. The capacity built right here on the African soil will reflect the realities on the continent and better answer our challenges. Capacity building in Sub-Saharan Africa remains promising. Women entrepreneurs have adopted mentorship as the only way to work together and prepare more future business leaders. This has seen promotion of innovation and growth of SMEs in a bid to foster growth. People always want to be able to know about how do you go from being a beauty queen to becoming a development economist and now to becoming an investor. And a key part of that is mentorship. I've been mentored by very dynamic women across Africa that I think uh, challenged me to dream much bigger than what I was dreaming for myself, challenged me to back up my ideas with education, which is very, very key. But along the way, they were there to hold my hand when I felt that I couldn't do it. Um, so I think as a businesswoman, again, it's just that kind of support. Right now in business, I get a lot of support from women, but also from my husband, because he is my business partner and he's somebody that really believes in my work and believes in what I'm doing and wants to see me being able to succeed. Um, what I, I would love to be able to see is women like myself being able to run two, three, four hundred million dollar private equity funds and really being able to channel that into women. Not so much as a microfinance that, oh, here's a woman in a village is microfinance, but rather investing in a woman who herself is running a hundred million dollar business and then being able to say, I want to be able to invest 200 million into this business and be able to see it becoming a business that employs 50,000 people. Only 30% of science professionals in Africa are women, leaving a huge gap of women participation in the STEMs. It's also argued that there's an inadequate encouragement for girls to pursue mathematics and sciences at a young age. Science is not a male-dominated um, uh, domain. Women are clever enough to be in sciences, and it's not a career that is not rewarding. We just need to ensure that we're there. So to be part of it, girls need to ensure that they're part of the movement. They need to take sciences, and they need to stop being afraid of sciences because we're as clever as any boy, and the opportunities are open for us. We just need to ensure and embrace them, and, 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 and maybe look to for the mentors that are there. There are few women, not many, but enough to actually show you that it does help to be a woman and to be in science and you will make a difference and all the issues, the cultural issues of it takes too long, you're not going to be an effective mother ETC, it, 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 it's, it's not true because every career that is worth doing and doing well takes time whether it's science or not science, and it doesn't mean that a woman can't do it and do it well and play the role that the culturally we're supposed to play as women. Science still plays a big role in changing livelihoods throughout health discoveries and technologies that lead to industrial and socio-economic development. For Africa to move forward, there's a need to leverage on science and technology. It's, it's, a, it's a very broad spectrum. So basically what we are looking at is really create an enabling framework 
to leverage on science. So first of all, you have to look at mathematics in a very broad perspective. It's mathematics, it's physics, it's chemistry, it's computer science. I think throughout this policy work uh, in relation that we are, we are carrying on with Minister African Minister of Education, we are looking. We have different number of priorities areas. One is increasing the number of PhD in Africa. One is increasing the mobility of research scientists within the continent, and one is increasing. The, or in improving the way we coordinate research initiatives within the continent. So basically, uh, with that, we have put forward a number of action, priority action, that we want to carry on in order to increase the number of PhD within the continent, to increase the supervisory capacity within the continent, and to improve the way we coordinate research initiatives within the continent. The latest statistics still show an immense imparity between genders when it comes to technology growth and innovation. With the birth of a new regime of programs encouraging girls to enter ICT, Women in Technology and GoHub, girls in Rwanda and across Sub-Saharan Africa are being encouraged to take engineering courses to create solutions for more disadvantaged women in the region. Let's really think about both the creation of technology and then how we uh, leverage technology for the solutions that we're designing for women. So for example, we are working currently on an initiative on digital and financial inclusion for women, where we want to help women scale from being micro-entrepreneurs to becoming small and medium-sized enterprises. Because what happens to women is that by operating in the informal sector, we're not counting the work that they're doing toward national economic growth. So women's work is not reflected within national GDPs. So by taking women more from the informal sector, putting them within the formal sector through SMEs, being able to strengthen the women's economy, which is a, a really robust economy, and then being able to bring in technology to make sure that our women are not being left behind, that they too are transforming into the digital economy, whether it's through fintech, mobile money, uh, and, and other such applications. But they have to be designed by women for women. So it means we have to now go back all the way to education. Where are the girls in STEM? Because ultimately they're the ones that should be designing these solutions. That sums it up for this edition of Doing Business in Rwanda. As Rwanda is uh, looking to position herself as an education hub, not just education, but STEMs. That's, of course, sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematical sciences. Following the move of AIMS from South Africa, the HQ, of course, on the way to Kigali, Rwanda. If you have any feedback, make sure to send us an email. That's, of course, dbir at abn360.com. Or uh, just tweet us. That's uh, dbirwanda. Imanul Sagawa. And from the entire Doing Business in Rwanda team, thanks for watching.